Hey, what's up everyone? Manesh, the Psychedelic Scientist here. Welcome to my channel where I provide easy to understand but non-superficial discussions of the latest in psychedelic science. This video is my second in my two-part series on the serotonin 2A receptor. In my last video, I talked about the effect that serotonin 2A activation has on the activity of brain cells or neurons. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the effect that this activation has on our thinking and behavior, not only when we take psychedelics, but also when these receptors are activated by serotonin in our regular functioning. Because at the end of the day, the serotonin 2A receptor didn't evolve so that we can have psychedelic experiences. It evolved because it serves some kind of adaptive evolutionary purpose. That is, it evolved because it allows us to respond to our experience in such a way that increases our chances of reproducing and surviving. In this video, I draw from a large breadth of studies, but I leaned heavily on a particular review paper to help organize and frame what I discuss. This paper was written by Robin Carhart Harris and David Nutt and is titled Serotonin and Brain Function, A Tale of Two Receptors. All right, so let's jump right in. First, let me say a word on serotonin. Now, serotonin is not the happiness molecule. This is a ridiculous oversimplification, which is often spoke about as if it's fact. In reality, serotonin is this extremely complex and multifaceted neurotransmitter that's involved in a whole variety of functions. It helps us regulate our mood and our response to stress. It relates to our thinking, our learning and memory, our digestion, our blood flow, and various homeostatic mechanisms in our physiology. Moreover, serotonin is located throughout our body, not just in our brain, and actually the majority of serotonin and serotonin receptors are located in our digestive system. And there are also actually 14 different subtypes of serotonin receptors. 14. And these are distributed in varying ways across our brain and body, and often have even conflicting and competing functions. Given this staggering complexity of the serotonin system, ever since serotonin was first isolated in the late 1940s, scientists have struggled to come up with a unifying framework of what exactly serotonin does. A little bit of everything, it seems. With all that taken into account, the serotonin 1A and serotonin 2A receptor seem to be the most important serotonin receptors for brain function. And something that's important to note is that serotonin itself has greater affinity for the serotonin 1A receptor relative to 2A. This means in normal everyday functioning at normal serotonin levels, the 1A receptor system is activated much more than the 2A system. It is only in situations when serotonin spikes and becomes really high, such as in times of extreme stress or life-threatening experiences, that the 2A receptor becomes significantly activated. And something to note here is that the classic psychedelics such as LSD, psilocybin, and DMT all have strong affinity for both the serotonin 1A and serotonin 2A receptor. Now this video focuses on the serotonin 2A receptor, but first let me say a little bit about the 1A receptor. So as mentioned, the 1A receptor seems to be more important in terms of everyday functioning. And when you activate the 1A receptor, it actually decreases the activity of neurons. This is in contrast to the 2A receptor, which increases the activity of neurons. And so we could say the 1A receptor is an inhibitory receptor, whereas the 2A receptor is an excitatory receptor. And when the 1A receptor becomes activated, it seems to chill us out a bit. Studies have shown that it reduces anxiety, reduces impulsiveness, reduces aggression, and can reduce depressive symptoms. In addition, the 1A receptor seems to overall be more important in the effects of standard SSRI antidepressant drugs. One way of conceptualizing the effect of serotonin 1A activation proposed by Carhart, Harris, and Nutt is that it enables something called passive coping, which is to say that it kind of dulls us out and relaxes us so that we're able to withstand and cope with stress and life's aversive experiences. So to summarize, activating the serotonin 1A receptor reduces brain activity and relaxes us a bit and allows us to better cope with and withstand challenging experiences in our life, which leads to reductions in our anxiety, impulsiveness, and aggression. All right, now let's shift into the serotonin 2A receptor, which as you know, is the receptor that allows psychedelics to induce psychedelic experiences. As I mentioned, the serotonin 2A receptor is activated relatively less during normal conditions and becomes more significant in times of high serotonin. And it's really important to note here that serotonin spikes when you're in states of extreme stress or when you're in a life-threatening situation. For example, you're being chased by a bear or you just got hit by a car or you're choking and can't breathe or you had a heart attack. In these kinds of extreme states, serotonin spikes and the 2A system becomes more activated. The effects of serotonin 2A activation, as you might guess, are a bit more complex than 1A activation. 
Studies have shown that if you breed mice which don't have the two-way receptor, they actually show less anxiety and impulsiveness. And also in rats that do have the two-way receptor, if you block it with a drug, it also reduces anxiety. In addition, there's studies showing that if you activate the two-way receptor in mice, it makes them more impulsive. So, so far this suggests that the two-way system might actually just do the opposite of what the 1A receptor does. Instead of reducing impulsiveness anxiety, it seems to be increasing it. However, this is in studies with rats, and when you go to humans, it actually gets a lot more complex. So in humans, when we talk about serotonin 2A receptor activation, there are two important points to keep in mind. One, the effects of serotonin 2A activation in humans strongly depend on one's current environmental context, aka set or setting. And two, the effects that serotonin 2A activation has might be very different in the short term versus the long term. It can even become the opposite in the long term. Consistent with this, whether two-way activation leads to anxiety or not depends on what context you're in. And whereas you might experience some increased anxiety during your psychedelic experience, for example, studies have consistently shown reduced anxiety in the long term. And also in terms of impulsivity and aggression, that also highly depends on your context. And studies with psychedelics have specifically shown that they can actually increase empathy and connectedness to others, which seems to be in opposition to feelings of aggression. So in humans, whereas 1A activation seems to be relatively clear, it relaxes us, reduces anxiety, impulsivity, and aggression, 2A activation really depends on the context and the time span since it was activated. An additional thing that's particularly suggestive with the serotonin 2A receptor is that activating it seems to both increase cognitive flexibility, so flexibility of our thinking, and also increase our ability to learn and unlearn associations between things. And this is not the case for the serotonin 1A receptor, which seems to have an overall impairing effect on cognition. Now, of course, if you activate the 2A receptor too much, you're gonna get impairments in cognition as well, but it seems that in certain ranges of activation, it has a facilitating effect on our cognitive flexibility and our ability to learn. Here, it's also relevant to note that both the serotonin 1A and 2A receptor increase neuroplasticity. However, they do so in different brain regions. So the serotonin 1A receptor primarily increases neuroplasticity in the hippocampus, which we can understand as a region involved in memory and stress. In contrast, the serotonin 2A receptor increases neuroplasticity in the cortex and more advanced cognitive regions such as those in the default mode network. All right, so let me summarize the serotonin 2A receptor so far in three points. So first, the effect of serotonin 2A receptor activation highly depends on context. Whether you're anxious or calm or impulsive or patient or empathic or aggressive really depends on the environmental context that you're in, mentally and externally, our set and setting. This is to the extent that we can even understand 2A activation as amplifying or increasing our sensitivity to our environment. Second, two-way activation seems to make us more flexible in our thinking and increases our ability to learn and unlearn associations. In addition to this, it increases neuroplasticity in the cortex. So in combination with these things, we could say that two-way activation increases both brain and psychological plasticity. And third, the effects that this has on you in the short term and long term can be radically different or even opposite. All right, so let me bring everything together. So as we discussed, in normal everyday functioning, the serotonin 1A receptor is activated more. It allows us to passively bear and withstand and cope with the challenges and stressors of life. However, as we become more stressed and the 1A receptor gets more activated, it kind of duels us out and might even impair our cognition. And then when serotonin levels reach a particular level, such as in states of extreme stress or aversive light-threatening situations, then the serotonin 2A receptor will become more activated and take greater control. And what this does is it puts us in a state of extreme environmental sensitivity, we're tuned to what's going on around us and able to think and behave in flexible and adaptive ways in order to do whatever it takes to deal with that situation. This is what Carl Harris and Nott refer to as active coping, in contrast to the passive coping we discussed in the context of the 1A system. And so the serotonin 2A receptor may have evolved in order to allow us to adaptively, flexibly, and actively respond to extreme situations in our environment. It allows us this crazy neural and psychological flexibility and plasticity that allows us to tap into behaviors and ways of thinking and perceiving that usually we're never able to access into. 
And another consequence of this heightened state of plasticity is that we can be strongly imprinted by what happens in the experience. Again, this can be in a very good way or a very bad way. And so what psychedelics might do is activate this system in the absence of any real threat in our environment so that we can use this heightened flexibility and plasticity to heal our wounds, change our patterns in thinking and behaving, and live in a more healthy and integrated manner. And again, whether this happens in a good or bad manner really depends on the environment and the context that we're in. And so this, in a nutshell, is an intuitive and useful way to understand what the serotonin 2A receptor does. And it makes a whole lot of sense and enables us to relate the experiences elicited by psychedelics to those elicited by a whole variety of other practices, which might also serve to spike our serotonin levels and activate this two-way receptor system, such as perhaps breath work, extreme fasting, sensory deprivation, and all sorts of other practices. All right, so that's all that I have for this video. I know this was a lot of information. Maybe you want to listen to it again, and also check out the paper that I've linked in the description below. It really organizes a lot of this stuff in a really great and relatively readable way. And so as usual, if you have any questions or anything you want me to expand on, please leave a comment below. Hit that like button to show me some love. And subscribe if you haven't already for more videos on the latest in psychedelic science.